And now, the first alert storm team, live from the 13 Now Digital Desk. This is Tropic Topics, sponsored by Peden Heating and Air Conditioning and Mariana Toyota. Welcome to Tropic Topics. Hello. This is our 15th episode. I think it's the 15th, I right? Might, be, might be 16. Could be 16. I think I titled this TT15, though, on the, sh on the you might have. last night. But whatever. It, it doesn't matter. I am apologizing for the 30 minutes late. It's my fault. I had some stuff I had to take care some of. Stuff. So. Yeah, I do apologize for that. But it's okay, I got to eat a sandwich, free sandwich in the meantime, so I didn't really. You had a free that. sandwich. Who's giving out free sandwiches? It's free sandwiches back there. Oh man, I didn't know it's that. It's like, yeah. It's last to know, always the last to know. <laughs> Beautiful weather out there, though, so there's some good news, and we do have uh, nice weather conditions for the foreseeable future, at least here locally. Now, obviously, we are keeping a very, very close eye on the tropics, which is why we are here, and we. Come to you every Thursday. Um, supposed to come to you every Thursday at 1, but today is at 1.30. Today is 1.30. <laughs> Not a big deal. Yes. And as always, if you have any questions, anything like that, make sure that you put them in the comment section. We will get to them. You can do it on any of the Facebook pages that you are watching it on. We have all of them up. All of those questions will be answered either here or later on whenever we can get to it. But we will try to answer all of them. Uh, but... Uh, Grace, if you want to start us off, since you uh, did the morning show this yeah. morning and uh, filling in for Kristen, who apparently has quit on us because um, she's this is two weeks in a row she hasn't done tropic topics, <laughs> so um, I guess she's just said I'm done. Yeah. Um, nah, she should be back next week, and uh, we should be fully staffed next week if I'm correct. Yeah, I think we got like two weeks there where we're on normal schedule. <laughs> You know, the, the funny thing about TV, Grace and I were just talking about this, is uh, <laughs> that you have to schedule everything out so far in advance because we have such a limited number of staff and everybody's got to fill in for somebody. So we were just talking about the holiday schedule and schedule for February of next year because uh, that's how far we have to pull in mm -hmm. front. But, yeah, anyways. But nobody cares about that. No, no one cares about our troubles. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the nice weather. Why don't you take it? Yep, it's super nice today. I think, honestly, this is the first time I've seen the tower cam with just bright blue skies in a really long time. So, uh, yeah, no cloud cover out there. Lots of high pressure in the mix today. Temperatures 76, well below normal, about 10 degrees below uh, what we saw yesterday at this time and pretty much uh, what we've been seeing during the late summer winds out of the north helping out some of that uh, red tide and the temperatures being cooler helping out that as well. It finally looks like that regular emerald green water that you're used to seeing definitely out on those beaches. I haven't taken a look at those uh, cams in a little bit, but I've definitely been getting some the, pictures on Twitter. The clarity today is much, much better. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, we do have some red tide out there. Um, the FWC did show that there it was, was moderate moderate red tide in um, Okaloosa County. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't measure any anywhere else, but we know it's out there because we've seen it. You can smell it. You've been to the beach. You can see it in patches. It's not as, it. <laughs> I mean, it's not as dense as I've seen it in the past. There's like it was just, areas of where you can definitely yeah. tell there's an algal bloom um, and you can definitely feel it a little bit if you're standing like right by the water. Yeah. Um, it just a little bit of cough, cough here and there. Yeah, it's just an irritant. It's, yeah. it, you know, it's a toxic algae. So it's just kind of an irritant. It's not going to yeah. kill you. After I um, got in from the beach the other day, I was like definitely itching my eyes a lot. So right, right. It wasn't too bad, but yeah, it's out there. Yeah, well, a north wind is helping and the dry air is helping because yeah. that is helping to cool down the water just a touch. And uh, that algal bloom likes warm water it mm -hmm. likes the warm air too so mm -hmm. uh that dry air helping to evaporate the water from the top of the surface uh that should all help to reduce the algae bloom and we should have a north wind for uh, five six nice days <laughs> um even as a our while. temperatures warm back up and toward the weekend and into next week we're still going to be talking about a north wind so uh overall we should be seeing a reduction in the red tide population uh along the coastal areas and as long as we have that north wind the water will be relatively clear so uh, that is the good news <laughs> there. 
And the greatest forecast ever, right? I know, right? <laughs> uh, you know, and and I think, you know, when I first moved here, people said, well, the secret's out. Like, everyone comes in October now. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why is that? And they were like, that's because that's when the weather's the best. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's kind of true. We're getting, we're about two weeks ahead of schedule as far as when the first real front comes through. Right. So, kind of nice to be a little bit ahead of schedule, but... Uh, definitely, we usually don't see temperatures fall into the 50s and lower 60s until we get into October. Uh, so a nice little preview of what may be to come going into the yeah, October month. 5 a.m. today, there were definitely some areas towards Mariana and yeah, I saw some 50s that, yeah. that were 50s, mid 50s. So and I think what cheap. everyone is taking from this forecast is the zero percent chance of rain for the yes, next five days. Exactly, and even the 10 percent later in the week, who knows? We'll yeah, see. I, and we'll get to the synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> set up in just a minute because there are some big challenges down the road uh, based off of the, what the pattern is delivering. Uh, but I agree. I think Grace is exactly correct here that uh, the next front that could bring us a stray shower next Tuesday and Wednesday, mm-hmm. I, I really don't see much moisture associated with it. No. We might just see a doesn't, coastal shower. doesn't quite reach us uh, right. too much. And, yeah, maybe – I mean, the, I think the biggest thing, moisture, right? Really. I think the biggest thing you're even going to notice is that just like right in front of that front, we may have a south wind develop maybe mm-hmm. for a day or two. So mm-hmm. you might notice it being a little warmer as far as the feel outside. But overall, we're probably going to be dry maybe for the next 10, 14 days. It's Woo-hoo. quite possible. So that's pretty much what everyone here has been praying yes. for for I the last it, month. Yeah, exactly. It was like, when will it stop raining? And I'm like, eh, October. <laughs> 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 uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But uh, I think uh, we got a nice long stretch of dry weather here. So um, certainly needed. Uh, that is definitely the case. But uh, let's move into what you're here for, and that is the tropics. Uh, and speaking of the tropics, we'll start off with the Gulf of Mexico temperatures. Um, they have rebounded, at least in the central portions of the Gulf. Pretty typical. It doesn't yeah. take a whole lot uh, of time between mixing up the water to get those temperatures to warm back up. And remember, 80 degrees, that's all you need. All you Anything need, yeah. above 80 will support tropical activity. Really 78 to 80 degrees is what will support tropical activity, but every degree or so warmer than 80 is more fuel for the fire, so to speak. It's like add, adding oxygen or wind uh, to the uh, to the flames. Uh, it's going to, to increase it. Yes, <laughs> fuel to the fire. I think that's the phrase. <laughs> yes. Is that, isn't that what I said? You said wind to the fire. No, I said adding. It's like fire wind NATO. or, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> you, get, you get the point we here. We get the point. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> it is, it's still plenty warm enough, even with the uh, cooler, drier air, which really is only going to impact the coastal, the coastline. It's not going to make much of a difference over the Gulf of Mexico, not until we start to see it uh, routinely getting down into the 50s mm-hmm. will we actually see our temperatures on the water drop. But... Um, yeah, so we still have plenty of tropical activity to go. Uh, thankfully, not seeing a ton for the Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of weeks. We have the remnants of Peter. I got a little laugh out of the National Hurricane Center's update yesterday where they said, Peter, Peter's out. I was like, ha, hmm. lol, y'all are funny. LOL. Yeah, <laughs> a, a little laugh out loud it's kind for of an all easy of y'all. One. Yeah, I know, right? They, they had some even... funny updates for Rose as well. Oh, all, did they? A lot, lot of, like, blossoming puns and uh, things like that. So they didn't so. take my Titanic play? Because <laughs> I thought the Titanic play was pretty cool. I was like, Rose is headed for cooler water. The ship she's on is going to sink. Yeah, It'd be no. nice if there was, like, a Jack out there as well. Right. And that's that's not on the no, list. No Jack. <laughs> no Jack. Rose. Can't even can't even move off the door enough to let Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio back up on it. I mean, come on, Rose. Come uh, on. Anyways, so Peter's not an issue. Um, the tut that has been hanging off the coast of uh, Florida on the Atlantic side uh, still there. It mm-hmm. just keeps redeveloping. Every time it goes away, it, their new one redevelops, and uh, that thing has been a super protector of yes. the Atlantic southeast coastline. Um, And, you know, as active as it's been in the Gulf of Mexico, honestly, the Southeast Atlantic needed a break, too, because they've had a lot of activity over the last couple of years. So uh, I don't think that they're feeling too bad about that. Uh, Speaking of Rose, we'll go to Rose next. Rose has not petered out just yet. Rose is is still a a post-tropical cyclone, um, so it's a remnant low at this point in time. It's it's being grabbed by that big upper-level uh, low uh, in the Atlantic. It will be pulled towards Spain and France eventually, um, 
probably won't have any tropical characteristics at that point in time. But yeah. uh, pretty typical. I mean, France and Spain and uh, even England and Ireland, they get some pretty intense cyclones. They're not yeah. tropical, but... Yeah, Medicaines. They, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that would be in the Mediterranean. But no, uh, what a it little would, different. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a touch different. But yes, um, yeah, they're usually not tropical by the time they get to Spain and France. But, mm-hmm. uh, but they do have some intense... They get some pretty good cyclones. swells from these storms. Oh, well. yeah, big, yeah. big, big swells. Um, so, yeah, Rose's not an issue either, but one that is an issue is the next storm, and it was TD-18. It was 98L. We were talking about it while it was 98L. Um, there we go. It is now <laughs> Tropical Storm Sam, Sam, and no, I'm not talking about our, uh, our sports our fan over there. Um, <laughs> Sam Granville. Um, yeah. He's been waiting for this one, though. He has. He he's, really has. He's super excited about the storm, and I was like, dude, you might want to chill out. Like, <laughs> it's probably going to be a major hurricane, and it might get really close to Puerto Rico, so uh, maybe don't be so... I got a little bit excited about Grace, but, you know, she didn't... She made her way towards Mexico. Yeah, and yeah she as did a cat some, three, she too. She did some damage yeah. there, so I didn't, you know, I don't yeah. want to get overly excited right. about yeah. things yeah. like Root that. Root for people, but. not storms people. Exactly. Come on. Exactly. Um, so Sam is expected to become a major hurricane, which is fairly rare for yeah. a storm that has not been flown into by the National Hurricane Center to be forecasted mm-hmm. to become a major. Uh, but all of the modeling suggesting at this point that this will, in fact, be a major hurricane, it's going to get really, really close to the Windward and Leeward Islands yeah. there. Um, the Euro suggesting that it may be a little bit closer to Puerto Rico. The GFS is suggesting that it's going to gain latitude. Mm-hmm. Um, and for those that are just joining us for the first time in Tropic Topics, we like to talk a lot of science in this. Mm-hmm. And what we mean by gain latitude is that as a storm gets bigger, so as a storm grows in size and strength, it has a bigger cor- Coriolis force. And if you don't know what the Coriolis force is, it just simply means that the spin of the Earth is pulling the storm north. So if there is nothing to push that storm south or counteract the Coriolis force, then then it will turn north. Because if it was just sitting dead still and nothing was pushing it, it would be pulled toward the poles because the Earth is spinning. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the reasons why we know that this is going to start to turn north. The question is, is how strong is the ridge going to develop Mm -hmm. to the north of it by the time it gets into that area uh, around the Windward and Leeward Islands uh, and the Greater Antilles? If there is a strong ridge there, guess what? It will continue off to the west. If there's not, if there's a weakness that develops there, then it will continue off to the north because then it will start to be pulled even further off to the north, less counteraction into that Coriolis force. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those are the really the big questions with Sam. It's not you know the environment that's in front of it. It's certainly not the water temperatures because this is actually an area that hasn't had a whole lot of storms this year. Right, yeah. um, and so there's a lot of fuel out there for this thing to tap into, and it, it will become a major hurricane, um, and it's going to eat up a lot of ACE. So that's accumulated cyclone energy, uh, and that ACE leads to us saying, well, this was a big active above normal season. Um, You know, two storms, Larry and now Sam, will Mm -hmm. probably make up the majority of ACE Mm -hmm. in this season. Uh, And speaking of active, we only trailed one season as far as number of storms, name storms, and timeline. Any Mm -hmm. guesses to what season that is? Last year. Last year, yeah. Yes. So uh, we're only trailing one season. We're ahead of 2005's pace. We're ahead of 2004's pace. We're only trailing one season for activity so far this year. So, uh, you know, it, yes, it's been really active um, with exception to Ida. Um, you know, the activity, thankfully, for yeah, the most has part, has been, been relatively weak. Yeah. I mean, we had Grace, we had Ida. Uh, everything else has been either offshore or relatively weak. So mm-hmm. that has been uh, the good news of this season, even though it's active. But these active seasons just are a pain in the butt because the more storms there are, the greater likelihood that one of them is going to be impactful. And we've mm-hmm. already seen that with Ida. Yeah. So hopefully this one gets into an environment um, that finds a weakness and does curve off to the north. So here you can see it. And uh, Sam probably becomes a hurricane, I would bet, by tonight. Yeah. Um, it's definitely it looks good organizing up pretty pretty nicely there yeah i mean you know hurricanes are pretty when they're not 
affecting anyone <laughs> when they're out in the middle of the ocean yes, yes. When, uh, you know we love a good storm when it's you know in the middle of nowhere and only the satellites looking at it yeah. um and it is it is going to be a pretty storm it's probably going to be really asymmetrical the only thing it's fighting is it's not like sheer it's a little bit dust, of dry air yeah. yeah some dust off to the north it's going to wrap it into the system you can pick it out Literally here by the see dust it. forecast yeah <laughs> um, it'll wrap it into the system but it will dispel that pretty quickly so no mm -hmm. not a whole lot of issues um and we have some natural dry air here yeah. uh, across the Gulf of Mexico and uh, the continental U.S. And that's thanks to the Arctic air mass that's in place. Yep. Um, so jumping into the Euro here, you can see Sam pretty easily on the map. See just how far south the Euro yeah. keeps it. Um, and that's because the European model is suggesting that there will be a stronger ridge developing off to the north. Um, I, you know, have been looking at the long range for the last several days on this. Uh, and there's some really significant questions as to how the long range is going to play out. Mm -hmm. And part of that has to do with what's going on in the Pacific. So we have a couple of big storms in the Pacific, typhoons, and when they recurve, they recurve into the jet stream. That jet stream then works back our way, mm -hmm. and it shapes how the pattern steers storms into the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of what's going on because what's going to happen in the long range here is we're going to develop a ridge across the U.S. What that means is that there will be a, a big lack of steering currents in, in the U.S. Um, so now we're going to be timing a probably significant hurricane mm -hmm. moving toward the southeast U.S. Mm -hmm. With nothing a, to steer it the other way right with nothing to steer it the other way in a pattern that is going to be favorable for cutoff lows mm -hmm. um, which are notorious for just being a complete pain in the butt yeah because cutoff lows they don't have a steering current they do whatever the heck they want they're kind of like hurricanes that aren't being forced in any direction mm -hmm. um, and there is a you know an old saying upper level low weatherman's woe mm -hmm. because it's impossible to say what an upper level low is going to do in a pattern that's not steering it because mm -hmm. it's just, it does what it wants. Yeah. It, it doesn't <laughs> have anything that is influencing it. Uh, and this is kind of the pattern that this storm is going into. Uh, thankfully, it does appear that even with the ridge, the biggest weakness is going to be right there in that recurve valley from mm -hmm. Bermuda back over to uh, the U.S. So uh, the GFS and Euro are kind of starting to come on similar solutions, and they both show a recurve. The biggest question is going to be just how far south and yeah. west does it make it? Um, do we have any kind of tut that is there? Euro and GFS both are saying yes. Yeah. The Euro is saying that the tut is going to be weak, and it ultimately helps to influence a retrograde of a low into the northeast, which may mean that this thing kind of gets slingshotted into Canada or maybe even Maine and, and the northeast, or it catches a ride on the prevailing trough and runs out to sea and doesn't right. affect anyone. Exactly. So, um, the, which is what we're hoping for. <laughs> yes. So the biggest overall thing to say here is that uh, past about six, seven days, yeah. big old question mark. <laughs> Uh, it, it is dangerous enough that there's going to be a major hurricane out there, and it is going to be threatening enough that this needs to be paid attention to very, very closely. Yeah. Uh, likelihood that this ends up moving very far south and west and getting into the Gulf of Mexico, extremely low. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's probably not going to be the case. I mean, if we're going to see tropical activity from this point forward, it's probably going to have to come from a, a cold front that's stalled mm -hmm. or, or CAG. Mm -hmm. So Central American Geyer in the Caribbean. Which we are not expecting in right. within the next 10 days or so no. at all. You know, so. we, we don't really see a pattern for that until we get to about October 5th and 6th. And mm -hmm. again, as I just mentioned, the long-range synoptic pattern, pretty big question mark at this point. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have nothing really to worry about here for us in northwest Florida. Uh, but we are going to be paying very close attention to Sam because Sam will make a run at the U.S. and could could threaten the U.S. and could influence our weather here yeah. eventually down the road. So um, that is the storm to watch. And I, I think I did see a question of somebody say, is Sam going to make it to a Category 5? Um, you know, I, I think that question gets asked a lot whenever there's a storm, especially when we're mm -hmm. forecasting a major hurricane. Fives are historically rare. I mean, we, we don't have a lot of fives. Yeah in all of the years of record they're mm -hmm. very very few and far between and typically the ones that do make it to category five strength they don't stay there long mm -hmm. um you know the ones that have 
affected the U.S. have been because they, right when they hit Category 5 status, they were moving ashore. Mm -hmm. And those are, there's four instances of that, and that's it. So, um, and the ones that develop and get really strong in the Atlantic, they usually weaken by the time they get to shore because they've upwelled water, Mm -hmm. they've pushed that water to the shoreline, then it has to run over its own fuel, and and then it ends up weakening. So, um, I would say... You know, if I was just betting on the strength of the system, I'd say three and four seems likely. Yeah, that's what Category I'm five, oh. probably not. Yeah. Um, and it's possible, but yeah. probably not. Especially in the Atlantic, you're running out of limited fuel unless you're in the Gulf Stream, which this is probably going to get pretty close to. Mm-hmm. But uh, the further north you go in latitude, the less likely you're going to be talking about a extremely strong yeah. hurricane. And so. it also depends on conditions when it does get to three or four strength, if it even right. has the ability to take advantage of additional warm water, right? like you said, the Gulf Stream types of things, right? which we won't know for a few days now. Yeah, so. exactly. So uh, it's a good question, but it, 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 but it's, you know, that that's kind of where we are with that. Um, so the names here, What we've got, we've got three names left, and uh, this was brought up. I always like to bring up something that was brought up on my social from Mm -hmm. the previous week. So, um, no, 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 I actually don't think I have a rant this week. Perfect. Other than the tsunami thing. Go ahead. Oh, the tsunami thing. I was, uh, that, that was pretty annoying. <laughs> uh, man, she's, people, yeah, if, if you believe still that there's a tsunami coming, I've got one, one word for you. You gullible. wouldn't know. You wouldn't know that it's Gullible. Coming. That's my word for you. You are gullible uh, because there's no science to prove that or back that up. Yeah. None. Zero. So, anyways, um, moving on. There's my rant. That was it. Uh, we only have three nor- more names left on the normal list. I took for a this look year. at the alternate list. Is it, well, I've got it next. Oh. You don't have to click to it yet. Hang on. <laughs> so I've got it next. But the There's reason- some hip names on there. <laughs> Are there? I haven't even looked at it. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> so uh, we don't use four letters. And, uh, you know, when I posted this, people were, like, making up random names for those four letters that Mm -hmm. we don't use. And I think they kind of proved my point of why we don't use those four letters. I think they thought they were being creative, but it just kind of proved the point that there's just, well, I mean, there's just not a ton of names that you can make with X and Q and U and Z and Y. I mean, what are you going to do with Y? I know someone named Yalda. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just saying, like, yeah, you could create the names for those. You could do it, but it would be extremely hard. Well, I mean, eventually you're going to get to... And then you'll run out. Well, you're just eventually going to get to some names that are just not really names. They're just (laughs) made-up words. I think some of them on the alternate list are kind of made-up. Well, okay. So we've got three more. Let's go to the alternate list. We'll show you the (laughs) alternate list. Uh, So we're not using the Greeks this year because we had to retire some of the Greeks last year. Um, And because that had never happened before, they ran into this dilemma. Where all the Greek letters sound the same. (laughs) So (laughs) kind of hard to differentiate sometimes. Zeta, Eta, Theta. I mean, I don't know. It gets very confusing. That was part of it. The other part was you had... Zeta that is now retired. Mm-hmm. You had um, Gamma that I think is now retired. Uh, so those names, what were you going to do to replace them? You can't go back to the Greeks and replace a Greek letter like mm-hmm. you couldn't. You were so. Was it going to be Zeta twenty <laughs> two? Well, I'm just saying. Like, yeah. were they going to retire Zeta twenty and call it the year twenty? And that goes back sure. to the reason they started retiring the names in the first place and replacing them is because they just didn't want to reuse them because of sensitivity. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't want you know we wouldn't want a storm, another storm being named Michael, right? Yeah. Because we just wouldn't want that to be brought up again. Yeah. So that that's certainly uh, what's going on here. So yeah, this is our alternative list. See, Hopefully, some of, aren't these kind of hip? Kind of Braylon. Hit. Braylon. That probably wouldn't have been on the list if this list was. What is the C? Car. Caradad. Caradad. I Caradad. Caradad. I don't know. I'm gonna Lucio, have to look up. Kenzie. Uh-uh. I know a Kenzie. I'm gonna have to look up the. Uh... Jacobus. Why not just Jacob? I mean, is that retired? I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> Emery Foster. Pax. I mean, they're like I said. Michaela. Hit- Ronan. Nolan. Kenzie. 
Jacob, Orlando. Did you say Jacobus? <laughs> like, I'm, I was looking at this earlier, and I was like, I'm not sure. Ronan, Maybe Sophie. Maybe they're just trying to get to those names that they're like, okay, this is really weird. We're never going to have to use this again anyway. I don't I don't think there was any thought put into this. I think <laughs> so it was just the random, thing. random generator, I, I random guess, name generator. If I had to guess, we probably shouldn't make fun of these because I'm guessing some of these, these might be some of the kids of the National Hurricane Center employees, and that's Whoops. why they got, <laughs> got put on there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they probably had a like contest at the office. Yeah, they're like probably that. like if you want your kid's name to be put on the alternative list, here you go. Um, if you bring in enough soup cans, your <laughs> name can be on the alternative. List. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was it. All right, so we're we're gonna wrap this up. I've got a meeting I gotta get to. Um, <laughs> let's look to see if there's any questions. I'm not seeing anything on mine. Um, you know, I think. Uh, I think for me, anyways, I think we're getting better at these shows. That's oh just boy. me. Um, but I see a lot of focus written down on the <laughs> So maybe we're just getting more distracted, and I just think that that's better. Um, and I see that my mother put Yolanda as the Y name storm. There you go. So I guess there are some Y name storms out there, but uh, sure. Um, you seeing anything, Spencer? Have we used the Spencer cam yet? Uh, I, don't, I don't have a Spencer cam ready. Oh, but, uh, no Spencer cam today. I did just want to shout out Miss Gloria. She came in a little late mm, today. Gloria. I was wondering where she was, but uh, she popped up She probably to say, popped hey. in early, and then she was like, Ross yeah, she, is late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah well, I was, I was late. <laughs> I do apologize. I'm sorry. I was late. Also, um... Shout out to Miss Nancy, who is enjoying her pool today. She is saying that the uh, temperature is warmer than the air temperature in her pool right now. The air, the temperature in her pool is warmer than the air temperature? Yes. That, that makes saying? sense. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, I believe that. That uh, sounds it great. It feels nice out there. Uh, I w- took a nice long walk, did about a mile and a half this morning, and it was was fantastic. I wish every day was like this. If I had any control, I've done nothing would today be. but work, so. Oh. oh. But after oh. this. All right, wait, I, I'm outside. confused. Are you going to be paid <laughs> for what you did today? In Maybe. palm trees. Oh, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, what else? Do we have anything else? I think there was something. Oh, we have koozies and pens. Oh. And I was told that we would give these away. But nobody ever told me how we were going to give them away. <laughs> Or what to do with giving them away. So I think I might just start picking random people and being like, see hey, us on the street. if you want a koozie, come to the station and I'll pick that person. Just randomly do that. Maybe we might, we might start doing that. So um, that's a ploy to get you to watch next week because we may give away some koozies and pins. Yeah. Um, they're cool. The pins have a stylus on them. I think I have Did one. Did you get one? I think I have one in my purse over there. Should I the, grab the it? The pins have a stylus on them, and the koozies oh, are cool. They say pen. the Storm Track 13. Uh, I have app a koozie. On them. We got a couple koozies in my house. Well, uh, you know, this would be a perfect opportunity to grab one of the koozies and show, but mm-hmm. um, I don't have one on me. Do you have one? Is there one around? Somewhere. Everyone likes a koozie. That's what I'm saying. You see all these people behind me. They're going they're to the rushing, meeting. They're rushing. They're running to They're going uh, to the meeting that I'm supposed to be going to uh, here relatively shortly because I was like, there we go. Hey, look, there we go. So here's here's the koozie. It does say Storm Track 13 uh, app on it. Uh, and then it says Panhandle Strong, right? Because we are. We are Panhandle Strong. And then the funny thing is, is that our creative services director said that uh, he picked this out so that you could read it. But you can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> What's it say? It says, check the Viper radar on the Storm Track 13 app. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> That's what it says. Keep on keeping on. Is that like a on. quote from someone? I don't or? know. But it, he picked it so that you could read it, and you can't read Maybe it. you can't read it. So... So we'll read it for you. So we'll read it for you. But <laughs> the koozie works, so that's cool. And like I said, the pen has a nice little stylus on the end. Um, and Emily it, was excited about her stylus. I'm excited about the stylus. I actually thought about it today and uh, thought since we have the the Splash Top app on our laptop or mm-hmm. on the uh, 
iPad that we could use a stylus to draw surface analysis for, for the show. But mm, okay. because I got here late. I was just thinking I like it because I think I have a little that. bit of carpal tunnel in this thumb, so I need it. You have carpal tunnel in your we don't have time for this. <laughs> Bye. We're, we're, we're done with this this week. Uh, we're keeping a close eye on Sam. Make sure to tune in to um, us, all, all of the shows, all of them. Grace will be in again tomorrow for Kristen. And, uh, and on the weekend. I'm here through this. E- you work the weekends. Don't complain about it. Uh, <laughs> she, see, see that smile? I she like thinks the she's weekend. getting away with something. But, hey, were you here Monday? No. Were you here Tuesday? All right. Yeah, we need to wrap. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. Download the StormTrack 13 app if you don't have it. Check us out on mypanhandle.com. we got a lot of quality content on there. Uh, and we got new content that will be coming soon. A um, little preview there. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, that's going to do it for this week at Tropic Topics. Thanks to our sponsors. Uh, and catch us next week. Bye. Thank you for watching Tropic Topics, sponsored by Peden Heating and Air Conditioning and Marietta Toyota. Be sure to download the StormTrack 13 app today to stay up to date with all of the latest weather information. For more local news, weather, sports, and more, visit MyPan.